Hello, I'm Nathan, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a task management application inside of Google Tables. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up your web browser of choice and go to tables.area120.google.com. Or alternatively, you can just search up Google Tables in Google or any of your uh, search engines. So any search engine, just type in Google Tables and it'll lead you to this page. And if you haven't had any experience with Google Tables before, that's perfectly fine. And if you're wondering what Google Tables is, it is a very nice looking and advanced spreadsheet. So what do I mean by that? Well, Google Tables can be used for a variety of different purposes. It's very similar to Google Sheets, although it's a little kind of, there are many things that are different with it and allow it to be used for a variety of different purposes really seamlessly. So you can use it for, and this is, again, it's not limited to these, uh, these specific categories, but it can be used for project and task management. Task management we're gonna go over in this video. It can be used for IT operations, tracking customers, uh, employee recruiting, and also product development. So again, a bunch of different ways that this program can be used. And again, in this tutorial, we're gonna focus on task management. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to Google Tables dot or this uh, tables dot area one twenty dot Google dot com, click the Get Started button. Here you're going to see a page, and this page is very similar to Google Drive. Uh, Google Drive, if you've used that before, again they're both created by Google. But with uh, again with Google Drive, you see your recent files. Instead of files, they are called workspaces inside of Google Tables. Essentially the same thing. Files are workspaces. And then you see your recent ones in here. And then you also have this new button in the upper left of the screen. And when you click this new button, you can create a blank workspace. We're gonna wanna create a blank workspace. You can also import from Sheets and there are a bunch of other options. But again, we're focusing on this one right here. So click blank workspace. It's gonna take a little while and you're gonna see the Google tables or the Google or the workspace interface. Workspace interface consists of multiple tables. So you can have multiple tables. What a table is, it's essentially a collection of rows and columns. So each new table is gonna have its own rows and columns. Uh, one thing that we're going to want to do here is double click on blank workspace, very similar to renaming a Google Drive file. And then we're going to set the name to task manager. Next, you're going to want to double click table one and let's rename the table to tasks. Click save. Now, what are we going to do? So in Google Tables, instead of having kind of your columns, instead of having your columns contain any data that you want it to, so for example, if I go to Sheets, so Sheets.new, if I go to Google Sheets, every, in each of these columns, I can put in, I can put in text, so a collection of characters, I can put in numbers, I can put essentially anything that I want in there. Now, this can be helpful if you're kind of doing a bunch of stuff and you're utilizing this column and this column. And again, you there are a bunch of different uses for Google Sheets uh, for having, again, numbers and text in the same column. But with Google Tables, it's a little bit different. So each column can only contain one specific data type. So for example, this column can only contain text. This column is going to be a, do a drop down, so it can only contain kind of a set of values. So again, that's a little bit different in Google Tables. And again, it's really one column is representing one kind of central, uh, one idea. For example, this column, if we double click it and rename it to task name, uh, if I double click it and rename it to task name, click save, make sure it's on the type is text. This entire column, so all of the rows inside of this column, or sorry, all of these kind of cells over here, they are going to represent a task name. Now, the next, we're gonna go on to the next column, double click on it, and we're gonna name it priority. 
So each of our tasks are gonna have a name, a priority from high to low. So again, click on option A, make it high, and then go to medium and then low. Uh, and then with the high one, you're gonna to wanna to click on that drop down and select that red color over here. Next, you're gonna click save. So we have our task name, our priority. Then we're gonna to wanna to have our task date. So just put date in the type call, in the type drop down. you're gonna to wanna to select date and then click save. Now it's gonna be date. Now you're gonna click on add a column. So we have our task name, we have our priority, we have our date. And then the last thing we wanna have is our, is a checkbox representing if our task is done or not. Are completed or not. So now we're going to add a new column where it's going to name it done. And then in the type, we can put a checkbox. Click save. So now, and you can kind of go on the edge of this column and then drag it out so you can kind of see the, the description of this column. So what I'm going to do right now is go to kind of some of this data and then I'm just going to fill in uh, I'm going to fill in these task names and then cell worksheet. Great. And then to select a priority, you just want to click on this drop down, select one from the drop down, medium, low, and then let's make this high. For the date, just click again on the, the right side of the cell and then select your preferred date or the due date. Um, and then I'm just going to go to some some other months in here. Now, uh, next what you're gonna wanna do, you see this done column. Let me just check both of these as done. Great, now that we've put in our data, you can see it looks pretty nice right now, but what if we wanted to make it look even better? What we can do is instead of having a grid layout, we can actually use a Kanban board. What this Kanban board or Kanban layout is gonna allow us to do is it's gonna group it, it's gonna take uh, one of our drop downs, so for example, priority, and then it's gonna put them in multiple sections. It's gonna have a section for all of the high ones and it's gonna group the task with a high priority together. It's gonna, the second column is gonna represent medium priority and group those together. And then the last one is gonna have a low priority and group all the tasks with low priority together. So click on this grid over here or that change view layout button and then select Kanban layout. Now, you're all set with the Kanban layout and you can see how when you, uh, you can see again, they're grouped by these different columns. So one column represents one priority and these are all part of those drop down ones. So if you wanted, for example, if you wanted to move one task from high priority to medium priority, you would just click on it or you would actually drag it and just drag it to the preferred column. And again, if you wanted to make this low, for example, you would just drag it. So again, a little bit, uh, a little bit of a visual take, a little different visual, uh, a way to visualize your tasks. And if you wanted to edit your tasks, you just click on it. So click on the cell or that task that you want to modify, and then just fill in the data over here. You can also add a new task by clicking these three buttons in the priority that you want the task to be in. So that's the Kanban board. I'm gonna switch back to the grid layout and you're gonna see something different. So you can see how our, our different tasks are grouped from priority high, all of the ones in high are grouped together, all the ones in medium are grouped together and all the ones in low are grouped together. This is called grouping inside of Google Tables and you can, in this example, we're grouping it based on the priority, but if you click this button, it has kind of a triangle, a circle, and a, or sorry, a square, a circle, and a triangle. The triangle is on the top. You just click on that kind of icon here. Uh, you can cancel grouping. So click on it and click cancel grouping. That's just gonna get it to your default view. Or if you click on group table, you can group it by month. So I click on, again, group the table by month. And then you can see that all the tasks in this month are grouped together. And then the ones in January are grouped together. The ones in February are grouped together as well. Now, the next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna use bots to automate 
or to archive our tasks. So when we click on this done button, we want, instead of having it just cluttered over here, we're gonna actually want to move it to a different table called archive tasks. And then all of our archive tasks are gonna sit there. And then our tasks table is gonna be nice and clean with the tasks that we need to get done. So in order to do this, Google Tables has a bot or automation feature that allows us to kind of automate uh, specific tasks when, a, when an action occurs. So you're gonna wanna click this bot icon in the upper right corner, and then you're gonna click on new bot. The first thing, or the first bot we're gonna wanna do is the archiver. Now, the reason we need multiple bots, we need one bot that's gonna be the archiver, one bot that's gonna delete the task from the task table. The reason why we need this is because we can't really move tasks between tables in Google, uh, in Google Tables as of now. So instead of doing that, we're gonna have to add a new task to a different table. So we're gonna have to add a new task to this archive tasks table. And what we're gonna wanna do after that is we're going to want to kind of specify the same data. So the same data in the task table is gonna be transferred to the archive tasks and then we're gonna be done in that table. So what you're gonna to wanna to do uh, is actually we wanna discard our changes. So we're gonna actually wanna create or duplicate this task table. We're gonna uh, uncheck duplicate table rows, click okay. And then we're gonna rename this to, double click on it, rename it to archive tasks. And then after that, we're going to want to delete the done column. So click on these three dots and then click delete column. Reason being is that all of our archive tasks are going to be completed. Now go back to your task table. Again, click our bots, new bot archiver. So what this one is going to do is create a new tasks in the archive task table with the same data as that task in the tasks table. So whenever we, a column value changes, whenever we do something in this done column, and whenever this done, so again, this is gonna me measure any change in this done column. So when I click this checkbox, this is going to happen. These series of steps are going to happen. This action is going to happen. Now, one thing we're gonna wanna make sure is that the done column, so we're gonna add a condition that the done check or the done column is checked. So this, this action is only going to happen when I check an empty box, which causes it at the end to be checked. So again, if I uncheck a done thing, so this is actually not gonna occur that much. It will occur if you already have done or if you already have checked, but if you already have completed tasks in this task table, then if you were to uncheck it and you didn't have this condition, then it would move to archive tasks. So select, take the following action and then click add row. And then you're gonna to wanna to select the archive tasks table. And you're gonna see something. So it's asking you for the task name, the uh, value in the priority column, and then the value for the date column. So since we're adding a row or we're adding a task to the archive tasks, it's asking us for this data. Now, what we're gonna to wanna to do is take the same data that's in the tasks table. So for example, if we were archiving the plan experiment task, then we wanted to take for the task name, we would wanna take plan experiment. For the priority, we would wanna have medium. And for the date, we would wanna have 12, 9, 20, 20. Now, in order to do this, you're gonna select or click on task name and then click on set template value. This is gonna allow us to take the same value. So for this task that we've uh, measured any changes, so whenever I click on this done or I click on an empty checkbox, it's gonna take this value inside the task table, the task name, it's gonna take that task priority and also the task date. So that's what our templates are. So we click on the templates, click on this insert column value or this kind of uh, code icon, click on it, select columns, and then put in task name. So again, what this is going to do is take the task name from the tasks table. It's gonna take that same exact tasks name 
and it's going to put it in our new task. For task priority, you're going to click on the priority, you're going to say set template value, and then put the, uh, the column for priority, and then for date, set template value, click column date. Now again, this is going to preserve all the same data in the task table for our new archive task. Now click the save button. And then what you're going to want to do after that is we can now experiment. So if I click this checkbox, then when I've clicked it, if I go to archive tasks, you're going to see that our task was kind of, you can think of it as move, but essentially we created a new task in archive task named contemporary essay with the same values as the one inside of tasks. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to delete that. And the reason why is because when we clicked on that checkbox, and you can see when we uncheck it, nothing happens because we checked to make sure that we were or that after the change was completed. So in something in done after this, after this column was modified, we wanted to make sure that this an empty box was checked and not a checkbox was emptied uh, in kind of here with the um, with the done is checked condition. Now, what we're also going to want to do is delete it. So in this kind of what we're doing now is we're taking the task and we're just adding a new task to archive task with the same values. Now, what we're going to want to do inside of tasks is we're going to actually want to delete that task and archive it or and add it to archive tasks. So delete from tasks and add it to archive tasks. So we're going to create a new bot, name this the deleter. The trigger is going to be the same as the archiver. So column value changes done. Make sure that the make sure that an unchecked column or an unchecked uh, kind of box is going to be checked in this conditional. And then take the following action: delete row. And we don't have to fill anything else, uh, anything more for that. Then click the save button. And both of these actions are going to be done simultaneously when we click that checkbox. So now to try it out, if we go to contemporary essay, click this button, you can see that it has disappeared. And now if you check archive tasks, wow, it's right there. So if we go and again, if we uncheck, sorry, if we uncheck one of these things, it's not going to happen. It's only going to occur when we check that box and it's going to be filtered from view. It's going to delete it. And then if we go to archive tasks, we're going to see it there. Cool stuff. So next we did some automation. Now what we're also going to want to do is forms. So instead of having to open up Google tables every single time, we can just open one URL, put in our task name, put in the priority and the date, and then we'll be all set and it's automatically going to add it to this task table. So click on forms, same place where you clicked on bots to the right of it, click on forms, click on new form. Now for the form name, we're going to specify, let's just say task manager for the form title, name it, create a task. You're going to see it. It's going to, uh, the form preview is on the right hand side. And one thing that we're going to want to do, you can put a description that's all optional, but you're going to check this done drop down, select hidden. And for the default selection, you're going to want to select no reason why we're going to want to do this is because every single task that we're going to add to our task manager is going to be not done. So we're not going to really add any completed tasks to it. There wouldn't really be a point to that. So instead of having to have to fill out no each time for the done column, we're just going to want to hide it and then make the default selection to no. Now click this blue save button and then click on task manager or this little icon to the next uh, to the right of it. So now we're going into a separate page. You can bookmark this and then you can add your task. For example, I'm going to name it work on essay. Priority, I'm going to set it to medium and you can see that the colors don't show up here, but um, they might add that in the future. And then for the date, I'm going to just select the 24th and then click submit. Now, when you've hit submit, you can see that in the tasks, and let me change this to a Kanban layout, you're going to see that the work on essay task was added in this medium priority column. Now, let's say we worked on the essay and we finished it. 
Now, if I click this done check mark and then click save, you're gonna see it's now moved to archive tasks. Cool. And one more thing to note is that bots and forms and I believe relationships are kind of, they're independent of the tables. Reason being is that each bot in each form, for example, and you can think of it as forms, they have, you have your specific data that you need to fill out in the form and each tasks have different columns that you need to fill out. So if I go to the grid layout, you can see that tasks has four columns to fill out while archive tasks only has three. That's why we have to create, uh, or forms are independent of the table. So you are, sorry, dependent on the table. So if you have a different table, you're gonna have kind of different forms associated with them as well as bots. So again, that's pretty much it. Um, we have in this tutorial, we've covered different ways of formatting with kind of our grids. We've covered sorting and grouping. We've covered the Kanban layout. We've also covered bots automating actions when you click on that checkbox. And we've also done forms to easily fill out your data using a URL. If you found this video helpful, uh, leave the video a like. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments section. If you'd like to see more videos like these, uh, click the subscribe button and have a great day.